Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome to my first Liza P build video. This build concept is simple. We wanted to deal the most damage we could in one hit in a build that works consistently, yet yeah, in boss fights or mini bosses. And we're talking about something that can really crush these things. Maybe one shot or two shot a mini boss. That potential to kill full bosses in say two to four fully charged hits. The potential is very high and it's pretty insane. It's also not that hard to use either. This is through the combination of ideal weapon handle that buffs your weapon damage on the next hit and then another ideal weapon head for the strongest one hit fable art we found in the game. The patient attack comes in multiple versions. There is patient slash or smash but ultimately you're charging up for one big hit and it's chargeable in that it consumes more fable bars to increase its damage dealing even more damage with a longer animation. If you plan out who you're about to attack in the future you can increase your damage even more by say using the right amulet for the target, the right weapon buff, say electric against puppets or fire against corpses and so on. There are many ways to make the numbers bigger. But without all that faff, the build is still consistent. You can kind of just do this whenever you've got even just two Fable bars for say a mini weak version of buffing up and doing one single Fable smash. Naturally, we can increase its power by storing up more and more Fable bars before going for it. And it's up to you how hard you want to go. We increase our Fable bar count via the P organ system. And the more we have, the more damage we're going to do, not only because of patient smash, but thanks to a specific boss amulet that increases your damage based on how much fable you have at the time. Further, we can increase the damage of one attack by having max durability at the time and run the attack multiple times a boss fight by using fable catalysts. When it comes to consumables then, you might want to consider farming ergo to make sure you always have them, but the truth is you don't need this, this is just going hard as possible. So yeah, it's strong as hell, consistent and easy to play and you can get it rolling pretty early on. With that explained though, let's go over how this is all working. Let's start by explaining the weapon, which as you can see is basically just a sort of ratchet head on a stick. It's quite funny and it doesn't have massive range because of that, but obviously it deals a lot of damage all the same. As you can see, this is the combination of the big pipe wrench using its head and the crap police baton for its handle. The baton is actually a very early game weapon. We get this in act or chapter two when facing one of those police robots. It scales well with motivity, which is the base of this build. So that's why it's so good. And it comes with a fable art strike chance temporarily improving the damage of your next attack. So it costs one Fable Bar, which we buff up, and then you can see the weapon glows red when it's ready to go. It doesn't last forever, but it does last a good while, and then that damage is going to be consumed. The buff will be consumed when you do the next hit. So it could be a fully charged hit, sure, but it could just be a tap. Either way, it's going to increase the damage and be consumed. So you don't want to use that on the wrong attack. The second part of that is the head. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, what we're looking for is a patient weapon R. In this case, the Fable Art is Patient Smash, but there is another one that I mentioned in the intro, which is actually the Fire Axe Blade. As you see, this comes with Patient Slash instead of Smash, and it does the same thing. The reason that we ended up going for the Big Pipe Wrench instead of the Axe Head is ultimately because it just results in more damage. That's literally it. To get the Pipe Wrench Head then, you're going to go into this cave or mine shaft. It follows after the final boss of Chapter 3 in kind of the section where you're entering Chapter 4. You pass through this mine, through the main path, it's unavoidable. And when you get into the big area, you climb all the way to the top where there's a chest which has the weapon within. Thankfully, this is very early in a playthrough, just at the end of chapter three, right? Next then we have the amulets. In a full playthrough, you will have four amulet slots. Right now, I've only got three and you begin with two. The most important amulet to have is one that's going to increase the damage against the correct enemy type. And very early on, you're gonna get the puppet destroyer amulet. So of course, whenever you're facing puppets, you'd want this on because it's going to increase the damage you do to them. Vice versa, when you're facing carcasses, the corpses, the undead, you'd want the carcass butcher amulet. There is also one that increases your damage that you deal to humans, but that's quite light in a playthrough. But once you get that, you'd also consider that. The second most important amulet then is the extreme modification amulet. This increases your weapon attack in proportion to the number of fable slots you actually have. So right now we have four and you can increase it to five. This is through the P organ system we'll explain in a moment, but you can get four very early in the game. In fact, as your first P organ upgrade, so the amulet really becomes relevant at that point. To get the extreme modification amulet, you're going to need to defeat the second boss in the game and kept the kind of boss soul. You'll need to find Aladoro before you can actually get this because you need to have him unlocked as a vendor, but he's found early game in chapter four, just before the final boss of that section. Once you tell him about Hotel Krat, he'll show 
show up in there and you can trade with them. So those are the most important amulets, of course. But once you get your third slot, I would strongly recommend the Strength Amulet. This is going to give you plus four motivity, and that comes into play when you think about leveling. Motivity is our main stat and the main scaling stat of the weapon, so of course we want that. When it comes to the Weapon Grinder buff, it really just comes down to what do you need? Are you using Flame against the Undead, or are you using against Puppet's Electricity? So you just have the correct one equipped for whatever you're going to be facing. So speaking of levels, this is what I'm currently at. Vitality does not really matter, it's personal preference. I would strongly recommend you have at least 20, but I like 30 for an original playthrough when I'm learning, so that I can tank hits. Vigor is how much stamina you have. I'd say 10 as a minimum is going to be required to have enough stamina to work with. And capacity is personal preference. You could have the minimal amount. I like to have a little bit, so I'm a bit tanky. Finally, you'll see that I'm actually at motivity 40. But the truth is I'm actually at 36 because I'm getting plus 4 from this strength amulet. Motivity is our main stat for damage. It's essentially strength of this game. And so it's the thing that we level first. Now that I'm past the soft cap of around 30 and I've reached a worse cap around 40, I would probably start leveling technique to actually still get damage as I level up. But I'd need to change the actual weapon itself because currently I've got A scaling with motivity and nothing with technique because of that. I could rework this to be say C in both. So C scaling motivity C scaling in technique and then level them equally making it a quality weapon that would actually result in higher damage but requires more levels in both to really reach a break point where that's worth it so as i've only just now hit the level 40 motivity that's what i'm thinking about next Next up, it's time for us to talk about the P Organ. As you progress through this, you get to higher phases and you'll unlock different sort of subcategories. To begin with though, the most important thing you need is to increase your Fable slots so that we improve our Fable Art damage. So we start by adding Fable slot one to get to four bars from our original three. There are more Fable slot upgrades though, found say in phase four, which is what I'm aiming for next. This is actually the only important sort of main phase thing that we care about. The rest that matters are these subcategories found under. To begin with, we care mostly about improving our one hit damage, right? So enhancing the Fable Art attack, that's what we want to do. And so you can start with that. As there is a Fable Catalyst consumable that helps you restore Fable mid fight, so that you can do this multiple times in a boss fight, increasing the consumable possession limit is a good upgrade too. The next upgrades I get were personal preference, just because there weren't relevant ones at this point. But then we move to phase two, where I can get some more relevant ones, like enhance weapon attack when durability is at its maximum. This is really important because it's a pretty hefty upgrade to damage. When you're at full durability, you're going to hit significantly harder. So for your buffed up single hit, you make sure you're at full durability and get this passive. We're also going to enhance the Fable Catalyst effect, meaning we get a little bit more from our Fable Catalyst so that we can fill our bars faster and use more. After that, again, personal preference, but as you can see, I've gone for special grindstone increase. This means my special grindstone effect, the buff lasts longer, and I'm charging Fable whenever I actually perfect guard, which means I can use Fable more often. Then finally, I'm currently on phase three with my first one that's complete, enhancing the stagger attack of charge attacks, meaning they'll stagger more often for more DPS and more ergo from enemies and more healing. But yeah, in phase four, you're going to be looking to increase your fable bars to five, which will be a big damage increase. I'm looking for a level two of enhance the attack of fable arts and increase your attack when weapon durability is also at its maximum. I suppose one thing I should mention is the arms. Your legion arm is going to be personal preference. It really depends on what enemies you're currently facing and what you personally chose to upgrade first. Let's explain the gameplay and how it works. Basically, to begin with, you just make sure you're ready to go. So am I at full durability for that damage increase? Yes, so we're ready to go. We will buff up with our weapon grinder with the correct buff. In this case, I'm dealing damage to a puppet, so I go electricity. Then I will buff up with my weapon art to improve the damage of the next hit. At that point, we just go for a fully charged Fable Art, the Smash of Patient Smash, and absolutely devastate here for 7,300 damage at this point. The damage would be increased if I had another Fable slot, which I'm very close to having, as I've just explained. And this is why I truly believe I could get to, say, 10,000 damage in one single hit, which is going to be close to half the health pool of many bosses in the game. In real world example, though, you're basically going to be buffing up with your grinder and also your buff up Fable Art and looking for the opportunity to patient smash as hard as you can in full charge, ideally. Even the quickest enemies, the fast ones, have windows of opportunity for you to punish. Usually, this is going to be 
after say a fury attack of theirs or something that's slow. Just watch them attack for a while and then work out what's going to be a good punish window, then buff up, wait for the punish window and go for it. After your first big smash then, you want to be able to do another one and that's where your consumables come in as I've mentioned, the Fable Catalysts. This rapidly charges your Fable and as I mentioned in the P organ section, we actually enhance this so we can carry four instead of three and how much Fable it gives us is also increased. In Hotel Crap, we have this merchant here from the very beginning, Polinda, and you can purchase from him Fable Catalysts. You'll also regularly get them as drops. As you can see, I currently hold 10 in storage and 4 in my bag, and I make sure I have at least 4 ready to go whenever I might need them. They're only 400 ergo each, so you can easily buy them, but it's up to you how hard you go with this build. Honestly, you can just play normally, like just deal damage, fill your Fable bars, and choose to spend, say, all 3 on a big hit on a normal enemy, a mini boss, even a boss, or just do a little one. Maybe you just use one bar to buff up, and then use a fully charged heavy attack, not even needing Fable Bars or the Patient Smash. The build is adaptable, it's just obviously there is a peak max damage version of it that you're going to be looking ideally to do. But there you have it, that's the straightforward Patient Smash build we've been working on. Trying to reach the max damage for one attack in these types of games is always interesting, and thankfully it's pretty straightforward in Liza P. This build kind of came to life when we found the Axe early game with Patient Slash, but then, you know, very quickly after that, at the end of the same chapter, another weapon with Patient Smash showed up, the wrench. One thing that feels a bit weird in this game is that the stat scaling feels very low, like the soft caps are low. 11 chapters and you hit level 30 and suddenly it's not giving you as much beyond that. But I suppose it is nice to have extra levels to go into health or stamina or weight load or whatever. But either way, I hope this build helps you if you're looking for a strong build to help you beat the game right now, or maybe you just found it interesting. If you guys are working on a different build that you think is very strong, let us know what you're running. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching, we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye